Hey, hey, God bless everyone. Sammy D sitting in the comfort of my Sam Mobile. We're going to get down to the nitty gritty, man. It's time to get cold out here because it's fall. You fall in love with Jesus. You fall in love with each other. You fall in love with nature. You fall in love with all of God's creation. That's the fall. So we enjoy all seasons. I am enjoying the fall. I'm having a cafe right here. And I'm reading from my little devotional book, 151, not 51, 150. That's right, say it like Brooklyn. 151 things God can't do. He won't violate his nature. He won't violate his word. He won't violate his character. Say, so there's some things God is going to say, hello, man. I'm not going to do that. But let me read them to you. It'll bless you. Watch this now. God's plan can't be overruled. Bang! You can close the book on that one. You can stamp a seal on it. Let me read it again because it pr probably went over your head. Huh? You say there was a fire engine truck going by and you, you didn't hear it? Okay, I'll read it again. Watch this. God's plan can't be overruled. <laughs> Your heavenly father's plan, the God you serve, the God that saved you, the God that you know, the God that you love, the God that loves you and calls you the apple of his eyes. He is the lover of your soul. He is Elohim. He is Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, the creator of the universe, the big mighty God that loves you. His plan cannot be overruled. Now you take Congress, for instance, in the politician division or the political arena. You can vote. You can put in for a plan. But it could be overruled. It could be. It's overruled. You go to court. I object. Overruled. Objection overruled. Your office, your job. You can come up with an idea with some plans. And they may say, well, you're going to shoot them down. We don't need those right now. They're overruled. In humanistic, earthly events, Things that go on in this planet, they could be overruled. Even in your church, some things could be shut down and overruled. But rest assured that God's plan, my God, my God, hallelujah, glory to God. That just makes me want to shout and jump and leap, and run down the street. God's plan cannot be Overruled. You say, okay, Sam, I heard you say that several times. What about it? I'm talking about his plan for your life. <laughs> Not just plan to create more universes, galaxies, planets, but his plan for your life. Whew. Brings it a little closer to home right now, right? Let me read this to you. The council of the Lord stands forever. Forever means forever. There's no end. Forever. Heaven and earth may pass away, but God's counsel, his plan, his word stands forever. <laughs> the thoughts of his heart mm, mm, mm. that's a little bit kind of romantic isn't it isn't it and let me let me let me bring it down to a little bit of a, a, a of of passion if if you if you're in love if you're married or you're in love with someone you say the thoughts of my heart for you. Ooh, hey, if you're a man telling that to a woman, you know she, I, Poppy, oh, oh, 
the thoughts of my, and I was just saying, God's thoughts of his heart, the heart is the, the center of a human being. The Hebrews consider the heart and the spirit one. God's thoughts of his heart to all generations. To all, not some. To all. That includes our generation. Man, this is this makes me feel warm. It makes me feel tender. It makes me feel like I, 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 I'm, in, I'm in love with the creator. I'm in love with the lover of my soul. He's in love with me. He's saying to me, Sammy, your name may be Tammy. Your name may be Freddie or Reddy or Betty. You could be Brenda or Mary. You could be Cheryl. You could be Joe. You could be Robert. You could be Fernando. You could be George. Whatever your name is, put it right there. He says, listen, my thoughts for you. My thoughts of my heart for you to all generations is that the counsel of the Lord stands forever. God promised you something, it's going to come through. You praying for something, it's going to come through. It's going to happen. I didn't say it, it wasn't Sammy D. I heard it from Sammy D and his Sammobile drinking coffee in Brooklyn. No, baby, this ain't me. This is the Lord. This is God's word. It says God's plan can't cannot be overruled. If God said it, bing, bing, boom, bam, it stands. If God says I'm going to bless you, boom, he's going to bless you. There ain't no devil. There ain't no demon. There ain't no hell. There ain't no mountain getting in the way. There ain't no storms of life. There's nothing that's going to stop the plan of God. Once God said it, he quoted it. Once God spoke it into existence, once God declared it, it is going to happen and it can never be overruled. Bing! I think I'd drink some coffee to that one there. That was exciting. <laughs> Listen, I'm a very sweet, kind guy, so put up with me a little bit. This plan can't be overruled. That's why you can sit back. Sit back and say, ba -da -ba -da -dee, scoo -dooby. It cannot be overruled, man. Now, let me go to the second one. God can't neglect his children. God can't neglect his children. <laughs> you wonder why I speak like that? God can't neglect. It's the coffee, man. <laughs> they put a little extra coffee bean in there. Okay, listen to me. God can't neglect you. You may feel that way at times. Because things are happening in your life. Trials. Hard times. Calamities. Conflicts. Or happening in the world. We don't know what's going on in this world. <laughs> Only God knows. Politicians don't know. Scientists don't know. Doctors don't know. You don't know. I don't know. They're coming up with all kinds of stuff, man. The kids go to school. The kids don't go to school. Go to school with a mask. Don't wear a mask. Take the vaccination. You need a booster. We're not ready for the booster. Get the booster, the booster, and the booster. But they're not ready for anything. They don't know what's going on. COVID-19, and now there's another pandemic, and there's another one coming. We, we're having problems with all kinds of countries and wars and all kinds of calamities and confusion. It's like that song, Ball of Confusion. That's what it is, a ball of confusion. Throw it all in the pot and mix it up. It's just nothing but a jumbo. That's what we're living in today. <laughs> People say, stock up, man, buy everything. Armageddon's coming tomorrow. Get out all the food you can. We're living in a confused, upside down world. Why? I know why. Because we turn our backs on God. Mm. That's the truth. <laughs> you say, Sammy, I never turned my back on God. No, you probably didn't. But others have. 
And according to the scripture, we all have sinned, come short, the glory of God. We all turn our backs on God. The only difference is we're repented sinners. We're sinners, saved by grace, not by works. We're repented sinners, so God accepts us. But people that have not repented, that are still doing their thing, that are waving a fist at God, that are saying, we don't need God. Get God out of the way. We're God all to ourselves. They're doing their own thing. You got philosophy. You got psychology. You got tracheology. You got all kind of theology that's coming from the left or right. God is being created instead of God being acknowledged as the creator. They're creating gods, and they're creating philosophies, and people are changing and running after that because it tickles their feathers. Uh, but there's a void inside of us that only God, watch my lips, I want you to get this, that only God can fulfill. And that's by coming into a relationship. You're not going to get it. You're going to miss it. To a relationship with Jesus. I said Jesus. I didn't say Buddha. I didn't say Muhammad. I didn't say philosophy. I didn't say pastor, preacher. I didn't say the apostle or the Prophet, I said a relationship with God through, watch my, you gotta, you gotta get this one. I want you to watch my lips and my eyes through the person of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Let me say it again. Through the person of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, the one that went to the cross. He was buried. He was rose from the dead. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, through a relationship with him, through to God through him, then my friend will be all right. The world will come back to its senses like the prodigal son. It says that he was out there eating with the pigs. He left his father, took everything, and then one day he came to his senses. He said, wait a minute, in my father's house, the servants eat better. Let me go back. The world needs to come back to God. The world needs to repent. This world, United States and other countries, South Central America, Africa, the motherland, and the Middle East, they all need to repent and come to Jesus and bow their knees. They're going to do it one day. One day they'll do it. The Bible says in Philippians, Paul the Apostle writing said that every knee, every knee, toda rodilla shall bow, toda rodilla doblará, and every tongue will confess, y toda lengua va a confesar. They will confess that Jesus, Jesus, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah! Jesus is Lord. So you might as well confess it now. Jesus is my Lord. He's my Savior, and I know that he will not never neglect his children. Come on, shout praise the Lord with me, somebody. Hey, hey. <laughs> God can't neglect his children. Parents neglect their children. They do it all the time. They abandon them, leave them abandoned and stranded somewhere. Somebody will find them. That's a shame. It's painful that you neglect your children. <clears throat> but God will never neglect you. Tú eres hijo de Dios. Nunca te va a abandonar. No te abandona. Pero si a mí tú no sabes lo que yo he hecho. No te abandona. Mira, te voy a decir una cosa. Pancho Villa y Tintán. Mira. Si él fuera a abandonarnos. ¿Para qué salvar, salvarnos? ¿Para qué salvarnos? ¿Oíste eso, Cantifla? Si él fuera a abandonarnos porque tú hiciste algo o dijiste algo, ¿para qué salvarte? Te había dejado abandonado. Si te salvó, no te va a abandonar. Puede disciplinarte o a mí, pero no nos va no a abandonar. God will never neglect us. Dice, but Sam, you don't know what I've done. That's okay. You see, if God was going to neglect us because of what we did, what we thought, what we didn't do, he would have never saved us. Why save us and then come and neglect us? That's what happened with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt by the hand of Moses. Uh, they said, why have you brought us into the desert to die? Listen, if God wanted you to die in the desert, he would have left you in Egypt. God didn't bring you this far to let you die. So you that are thinking, my God, you don't know what's happening. I got bills. I got to pay this. I got to pay that. My family don't love me. Nobody cares. I'm alone. I'm single. Listen, God didn't bring you out of whatever mess you came out of, whatever jam you came out of, whatever funk you came out of to abandon you in the middle of the desert. If God brought you out, he's going to bring you in. Settle down, man, and give God praise in the meantime because he never abandons your name. Never neglect his children. Come on, shout praise the Lord, somebody. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, yes, sir. That's my God. That's the God I serve. 
el ser un Dios vivo. Yo quiero sentir un, un Cristo de poder. Yo quiero sentir, bing, 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 el Espíritu Santo. You serve a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth bow down him. Scooby da ba da ba dee boo, sky ba da ba dee ba ba. You serve a mighty God. He'll never abandon. Let me read the scripture to you. Watch this now. If you then, being evil, God said, "This not me." If we're being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children. No matter how evil we are, we, we take care of our children. We give them good things. How much more shall your father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? <laughs> Matthew chapter 7. The other one was Psalm 33. God is a good God. He's going to take, listen, I just came from the 7-Eleven. Just came from the 7-Eleven. But I got my coffee. I'm always meeting people. I'm making my business to meet people, to talk somebody, to somebody, either about God directly or indirectly. Say something positive. We're living in a very, very, very dark, negative world. We are the light. We're supposed to shine. About... Two weeks ago, met a young lady. She's in early 20s, Caucasian young lady. She had a little doggy with her. It was one of those that uh, run by batteries, you know, little puppy, beautiful dog. And I said, hi, how's your dog? What's his name? Her name. She says, I call her Halo. You know, like the Halo that the, the angels wear. Halo. I said, it's a beautiful name. And that's it. We walked away. So I see her again today. The 7-Eleven, and I went up to the door. Hello, Halo. <laughs> That's what I said. Hello, Halo. And she said, oh, you remember. You remember his name. I said, of course. Who's going to forget this beautiful little puppy's name? Halo, like an angel. And then I went to pay for my coffee, and she was behind me, and I paid for her coffee. I said, charge, charge the coffee. Do I got the money? My money is funny, and my credit can't get it. But I still had enough to pay for the coffee. And when I came out, no strings attached. And I don't want no strings attached with anybody. I don't need your name, your phone number. I don't need nothing. I just got in my car. And she said, that's very kind of you. Thank you. And I said, take care of yourself. Have a good day. Gifts. We give gifts to one another. My son is he's a funny kid. I think he came out like his father. <laughs> you may say, hey man, he's, at, he's telling me, uh, let's keep the tradition. I'm like, uh, tradition, condition, position, commission? What tradition? The only tradition I know the ones that uh, our forefathers made Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and those that wrote the independence of uh, the rights and all that other stuff that I don't even know about. <laughs> It's funny, when you get stopped by a cop, I've seen videos say, I know my amendments, I know the my independent, I don't know nothing about that. You know that? I don't. <laughs> All of a sudden, people know, yeah, well, what's the fifth one? Ah, uh, the fifth is the fifth of Bacardi. That's probably all you know. People all of a sudden want to get political. I, I don't know none of that stuff. You know it? <laughs> I don't know all the presidents. I don't even know my alphabet. <laughs> You say, Sam, what's in that coffee, man? <laughs> I don't know those things, man. I know Jesus. That I know. Woo! Hey! I know, G I know Jesus makes us intelligent. We're not supposed to go around being dummies and stupid. I know how much I know. That's all I can tell you. I'll go as far as I can go. The other, 
Hmm. If I don't have it, I'm going to still keep marching. How's that? I'm going to still keep marching. I'm not going to feel inferior. I'm not going to feel like with a complex. I'm going to keep on marching because, oh, when the saints mm -mm, come marching in, oh, when the saints come marching in, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints come marching in, when the saints come marching in, Celestial, lo conoce. So anyway, my son says the tradition. I said, what's the tradition here? He says, every year you get me one of those, I don't know what you call it, I'm not up to that. It's a watch. It's supposed to be a cell phone, maybe a television, maybe a microwave, maybe it gives you a rub down, maybe whatever it does. I don't know. He says, you, you, bro, you get me one every year for Christmas. It happens to be that it's Christmas is his birthday. His birthday falls on Christmas. I said, oh, Maria, wow. I got to get two gifts for this kid. One for Christmas, one for his birthday. Wow. What a double yammy. But he's my son. So I want to give him what I could, what I can afford. So I said to him, listen, I'm going to get you that phone. I'm the watch. I'm going to get you that watch. I'll send it to you. You'll get it by, by Christmas. Tradition, he said. That's tradition. You're going to have to stop this traditional thing. But anyway, my point is this, man. That we like to give good gifts to our family members, to our loved ones, to our mothers, to our children. The same way if we being evil, the Bible says, give good gifts how much more your heavenly father, I want you to take this very serious, your heavenly father wants to give to you, wants to give to me, good things. He gave the best, he gave Jesus. Can't get nothing better than that. He gave Jesus himself, his only begotten son. He gave, I can taste Jesus. He just gave us Jesus the best gift ever so he says here he cannot neglect he's not gonna neglect you your husband may your wife may your kids may your boss may from your job others may but god will never neglect you father in jesus i pray for everybody listening around about all those who are touching without the very souls of their feet in jesus name i pray amen mm. ah, god bless you i love you in christ